Hello and welcome aboard to this episode of the We Are Reading One Piece podcast. This is a podcast dedicated to following the entire story of One Piece from beginning to end as we focus on one volume each episode. We keep the discussion spoiler free for new fans of the series, so this is the perfect place to follow along whether you're new to the series or just want to revisit the world of One Piece with us. This week we will be covering volume 20, Showdown at Alberna, which covers chapters 177 through 186. My name is Joel, and I'll be your host. And joining me to, today, we have Sean. Hey, this is Sean. And we have Evan. Hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, so um, we had a little, little break here, and our schedule is going to be a little inconsistent um, for probably the next few weeks. So we'll record when we can. Um, but yeah, with, with schedules, and I have a trip coming up, so it's going to probably be a little um, a little off schedule. But we'll we'll see what we can do. But for this week, um, let's get into the recap from last volume. The crew made their way to Rainbase, where they had a run-in with Smoker. They split up and tried to escape, but all the crew except Sanji, Chopper, and Vivi managed to get caught in the cage alongside Smoker in a trap set by Crocodile. He starts to fill the room with water, giving them a one-hour time limit to get out. Meanwhile, Baroque Works put their plan into motion by having Mr. Two impersonate King Nefertari and causing an uprising in Nanohana. This gave the rebels even more fuel to fight, along with some weapons on a crashed ship, courtesy of Baroque Works. Missile Sunday defeated Pell and brought Vivi back to Rain Dinners to meet with Crocodile, who explained he would let Vivi uh, free her friends if she managed to recover the key to the cage that was gobbled up by one of the banana gators. As he begins to take his leave, he gets a call from the unknown crew member, Mr. Prince. After outmaneuvering Crocodile by having Chopper act as a decoy, Sanji, aka Mr. Prince, made his way into the casino and defeated one of the banana gators that had swallowed the key, along with Mr. Three, who shielded himself in a wax ball. Trying to get his payback, Mr. Three throws a key away, which wasn't such a great idea as Sanji forces Mr. Three to make a new key out of wax to open the gate. After escaping the casino by getting flushed out, Luffy orders Zoro to save Smoker from drowning, who repays his debt by letting the Straw Hats escape this one time. They find one of Eyelash's friends, a giant crab mover, which they plan to ride to the capital of Albarna. But Crocodile is less willing to let them escape as he grabs Vivi. Luffy quick, quickly jumps out and takes Vivi's place, telling his friends to keep going while he takes care of Crocodile. The stage is set. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's get into chapter 177, 30 million versus 81 million. As Vivi worries about Luffy, who is now being left behind, Nami and Zoro remind her that Luffy can handle himself, and she needs to focus on stopping the rebellion. They remind her she is not fighting alone. She shouts to Luffy that they'll be waiting for him. Luffy tells Crocodile that he needs to defeat him for Vivi. Crocodile finds this amusing and calls him a fool for risking his life for someone else, but Luffy calls him the fool. This causes Miss All Sunday to laugh, which Crocodile finds less amusing. He threatens her by her real name, Nico Robin. She says he promised not to call her by that name, but decides to start heading to Alabarna. Crocodile plants a small sand timer, giving Luffy three minutes to fight him. Luffy starts throwing attacks, but none of them land as Crocodile always turns the sand on impact. Crocodile uh, tries to tell him it's futile, but Luffy doesn't let him finish by trying to punch him in the mouth. All right, so we finally get the showdown. Luffy versus Crocodile. Who wants to start off on this one? I would ask if Evan does, just because I'm trying to adjust some technological difficulties on my end. <laughs> All right, Evan, go for it. Yeah, this is what we've been waiting for, you know, this whole arc. <laughs> so it's pretty epic to see them actually trade fists at this point. Um, I think Oda does an amazing job visually with this fight. Like, the sand looks so good. Um, and Crocodile kind of like evading and just like turning to sand, I think looks incredibly appealing on the page. Um, so yeah, I'm just like super hyped at this point, like loving this battle. Um, Luffy seems to be on the offensive where Crocodile is just kind of absorbing everything, but, uh, yeah, pretty epic start to the fight. I love yeah, the um, how he puts a timer on it, like, <laughs> like we already haven't gotten enough like Bond villain, like you have one hour to escape, like you here's the key, and he like throws away the keys, like setting up all of these uh, 
of I only have been three minutes kind of to play with. <laughs> and he has like an hourglass that has a stake in it. It feels like a very specific thing to have, uh, but comes in handy in this situation. <laughs> he just so happens to have a three minute hourglass that has a stake <laughs> in it that you could throw into the ground and use for this exact moment. Well, that's why he, he said you have three minutes because that's how much time he has in this timer that he has <laughs> with him. It's just like, that's all I got. So this is what we that's have all I got. <laughs> I left my hour long one at home. Like. <laughs> no, but I think that shows like a level of confidence with, with Crocodile. Like he's like, I'll give you a chance for three minutes, but that's all the time I'm willing to waste with you. Cause I have more important things to do. Like he's not even like giving Luffy like like a serious thought. So uh, he's just kind of like amusing. Like he finds it amusing and it's going to kind of be like um I'm just gonna like toy around with this guy for a little bit and then uh, I'll take off when I'm done with him. Yeah, I think that leads to like a really funny dialogue where Crocodile's kind of having this like composed uh, conversation and Luffy just keeps cutting him off and is like <laughs> attacking and like throwing everything he's got at Crocodile. And Luffy is taking it very seriously and he's not. Yeah. How about you, Sean? Yeah, uh, I echo. I, I didn't even notice that the hourglass with the stake in it, that really is very funny. I mean, it, it almost. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, I love that Luffy's just like, I think at some point, well, maybe he doesn't because knowing this character, he might actually be like, I'm making progress. But I think at one point, <laughs> Luffy like acknowledges that he's not, his attacks are ineffectual, but he's still pissing Crocodile off. So that's enough <laughs> for him to just be like, what? What, are you trying to say something, buddy? Uh, yeah. You got to reform your mouth constantly? You know, in his head, he's like, this isn't actually working, but like, I'm still going to do it because it's funny. Like... <laughs> Yeah, I, I love this moment where um, Luffy's stomping the sand, and he's like, "Take that and that." Like he's like thinking, like he's actually like maybe like doing something to him, and Crocodile's like forming behind him. Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, and and I, I, I echo Evan the effects of Crocodile. That the art here is really a, a masterclass of, of just like this weird, like particularly even like, I love that last one after his his mouth is reforming after Luffy punches him at the end the last page mm -hmm. it's just like grotesque and it's like just like <laughs> well it looks it's a uh, you all seen Terminator 2 yeah it kind of reminds me instead of liquid metal it's all sand mm. he's kind of the T1000 but he's sand instead <laughs> yeah I totally can see that yeah for yeah, sure I, I think the, um, the sand effects are really cool um like the like just like the amount of like detail that goes into it like there's like a lot of like kind of like heavy shading because like you can see like, like the grains like there's this like one panel where Luffy is doing um like the gum gum stamp and like he's like kicking through his head like or like his upper torso and it's just like the sand's like splashing upward um yeah. but like it looks like really cool um and it's just kind of going like right through him um so yeah and this kind of like like Evan brought up I think uh last episode how Luffy was like struggling with Smoker and it's kind of like the same thing that he had with smoker the same thing it's like he can't actually make contact but he, he's he's the the devil fruit is like something he can't overcome just by punching right so luffy's like really outmatched here but that's not stopping him like luffy's still determined to try to beat crocodile he knows that this is his time to finally like you know try to help his friend vb and you know there's a lot riding on this fight because he uh the fate, the fate of the whole country and like his friend um is really riding on on luffy he, he kind of talked a big game he said i'll take care of this guy for you so he kind of has to like hold up his end of the deal. Right. A lot of stake. Quite a bit. And yeah, then the other part of the like, chapter. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, you, you go first. I was gonna mention the beginning of the chapter where everyone's kind of like supporting Vivi and um like you said, she's not willing to kind of put all of her trust into Luffy or is just like scared to do so. Um, but everyone like showing support and being like, you know, he can take care of himself. Like we got, we have other things to worry about. I thought that was kind of a, a tender moment, um, with the crew yeah. in the beginning of the chapter. Um, yeah, agreed. and then the only other thing I was going to mention was the reveal of, uh, Nico Robin, the alias of Miss All Sunday. Yeah. Or I guess Miss All Sunday is the alias of, yeah, that's what I meant, yeah. but <laughs> Yeah, I was going to mention this character, um, Nico Robin, because like Nico Robin has been like 
very enigmatic about like what her true intentions are here um because like the first introduction that the crew had to this character was like she was going to straight up give them like the the log post to go to alabasta but she also just straight up killed igram at the time so um and now like you know she's been working with crocodile but over here she's kind of laughing at crocodile she's kind of like having like um like a moment where she's like finding this amusing but crocodile not so much but like she seems to like she seems to be enjoying this for like a different reason than crocodile is you know Mm -hmm. but we don't really know exactly what her like her thoughts are here yeah you, you feel a little friction between them in the scene she does not seem happy about he he promised not to use that name so yeah yeah hmm and then Smoker had mentioned something about this character last time as well, about how the, like this woman's dangerous and um, has a bounty on her head, mm-hmm. and you know it could be a threat to the world. So I, I think there's there's more to this character than we've seen so far. All right, but um, any other thoughts on the chapter? Fight's just getting started. Yeah, I'm gonna move on. Okay. Uh, Abby, you want to bring us to the next chapter? Yep. Chapter 178, Grand Line Level. As the sands of time continue to dwindle, Luffy finds himself on the defensive against Crocodile. After narrowly escaping a desert sword attack, Luffy is caught off guard and finds himself in a pit of quicksand. Luffy escapes and launches a series of attacks, which Crocodile evades easily and counters, catching Luffy with a crescent cutlass attack. In shock, Luffy looks down at his right arm, which now resembles withered up beef jerky, and begins to panic. Remembering the water that Toto had given him, he rehydrates his arm, yelling, Yuba won't lose to the sand. Now desperate, Luffy attempts to swallow up Crocodile, but this only angers him and he sends a massive sandstorm towards Yuba. The sandstorm is so large as noticed by Smoker and Tashigi in Rainbase, as well as the Straw Hats. Vivi can tell just by the look of it, this is the work of Crocodile. Luffy is furious and fears for Toto. He begs Crocodile to stop the sandstorm. Crocodile ignores his pleas and plunges his hook through Luffy's chest, saying, Upstarts like you are a dime a dozen in the Grand Line. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but this one gives me chills. Like, just like this. This this end of this chapter here it's pretty brutal oh such a visceral scene at the end of this chapter that that silhouetted image yep 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 Yep. yeah this is uh a different level like it, it really emphasizes like even i don't think even well in my mind, Arlong never even got this for like in some ways. He was it was just this like it was always a bit more of a back and forth. This is a definitive like Luffy, you don't understand what the fuck you're doing right now. Like <laughs> you don't know who this guy is. Like yeah. you, you have stepped into a shark pool you are not fully prepared for. Like no, nope. that's silhouette. You're like, he's dead. <laughs> Doesn't look good. Like that's a death, that's a death finishing move right there. That's a, that's a Mortal Kombat fatality. But... Yeah, that exactly. <laughs> and I think we'll get more of those later on in the in the volume as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah was... Um and uh like the just like the sheer scale of Crocodile's attacks as well. Um like I love going from like where you can see like the sand like slashing through and you see like this like he cut the desert in two and then when it like zooms out like it's like a massive like pit that like cracked that made of the sand and like Luffy's like just like trying to run out of like the middle of it. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, so I, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, very impressive. I love the shot when um after Luffy's arm's been withered up. He drinks the water and then he's got this just like jacked up. Um, just full Popeye. <laughs> yeah, full on Popeye. And some spinach uh, in that water. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that Yuba water has got something else in it. Um, but that was pretty comical. Yeah, and it's, it is pretty shocking to see Luffy's arm like be withered like that. 
because you think like oh wow like is Luffy's arm just gone now like yeah because it, it doesn't seem like he's coming back from that yeah and as he's running away to get the water his arm looks like a little like wet noodle kind of like <laughs> flapping in the wind <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's not looking good but it's, it's also quick thinking age. though um because he, he yeah. remembers oh i have the water he's like oh that that'll work so Luffy, these are like the moments where Luffy has like good instinct, like because he doesn't really have like like the book smarts, but like this is like a good thinking. Like he's like, oh, like he took my moisture, so let me go get the moisture because he happened to have some nearby. So like yeah. that, that's where like I think Luffy does kind of shine here. And right after he gets the water, he tries to change things up and eat um, crocodile, and he even says gum gum munch munch, which. Feels like he's definitely taking a book from Wapple's uh, yeah. attack there. Uh, some, more, some more Wapple smiles, like yeah. <laughs> I got through to that kid. <laughs> nah, I bet Wapple would like be like, "Hey, he's um, he's taking my moves. Yeah. You gotta like penalize yeah. him." Stealing it. It's against the King's Law, number three ninety seven. Like. <laughs> That's mine. Wapple's like, you gotta eat the whole body if you're gonna transform him into something else. <laughs> you're not even doing it right. <laughs> And the way Crocodile comes out of his mouth, like he looks like um, it's almost like Ghostbusters. Like Ghostbusters were like uh, ghosts coming out of like the um, like the trap. He's just kind of like, flying out like a ghost. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that is hilarious. Like, the, 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 the enough, munch munch. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Luffy's face, um, right after, like right as Crocodile stabs him, right after he says "Stop it right now" or something. It's just this like blood curdling image it's really good it's a short little thing at the side of the panel yeah yeah good stuff good stuff yeah i think well, this is like tough, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> good storytelling good storytelling yeah. yeah it feels like luffy really, really let his guard down i think he let his emotions kind of take over and was just like gone to a screaming match and forgot he was in like a battle to, battle to the death um and suffered from that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, this is Man. just pure desperation here. Damn the cells with the hook and like just a cell with the blood dripping. Like, damn. Yeah. Gnarly. And the straw hat just on the ground. Yep. And like just the fact that like crocodile is like toying around with Yuba, um, was also like, I I think it's like really great that they show him like as a villain. Because like he's like like as a, like a form of amusement for him, he's again toying with um, like this village. He's like like I've been just like you know throwing sand uh, the the sand twisters at the this one town, like mm -hmm. just to keep like hitting them over and over again. And so he's like he's aware of like uh, Toto like digging over there and like, not abandoning it, and he's just like taking advantage of that. So it's it's really pretty sick of him to to be. So it relentless is a about this. Deeply cruel move for yeah. so very little gain on his part. Like exactly. Yeah, that's just some evil, evil shit. Indeed. But he and knows he even acknowledge his... Luffy at the end after like impaling him. He just kind of like this is um even in that moment like doesn't never really like took him seriously. I feel like. Hmm. Yeah, and then like he he knows that this attack on you, but it's kind of. A way to get under Luffy's skin as well. So to him, he's just kind of like, kind of like digging at it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, along with you know, literally digging the hook into his his chest. Okay. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> All right. Uh, ready to move on to the next chapter? Ready. Yep. Chapter 179: Showdown at Alubarna. The crew continues traveling on the crab mover that Nami names Pincers and tries to keep busy so they don't worry about Luffy. Over on Yuba, Toto hits water in the ditch that he's digging and is excited that Yuba continues to live, unaware that Crocodile is currently building a massive sandstorm that will make its way right to Yuba. As Crocodile holds Luffy up by his hook, he notices water leaking from Luffy's barrel that Toto had given him. He tosses Luffy into the giant sand pit and leaves him to die. At rain base, Smoker gets ready to depart to take care of something that came up at sea. He gives Tashigi the decision to either assist the Royal Guards or to try to capture Luffy at Alabarna. She gets the Navy ready to pursue the Straw Hats. Before leaving, Smoker tells Tashigi to pay close attention to what happens to this country as history is being made. 
Koza heads for Albarna with the rebels at full speed, while Chaka prepares the royal army for the upcoming attack, and they order the city to be evacuated. Nearby, Miss Merry Christmas and Mr. Four have kidnapped the real King Nefertari as they watch the chaos from on top of a cliff. As all the key forces make their way to converge at Albarna, Luffy manages to get his head above sand, shouting for me. <laughs> okay, he's not dead. <laughs> but he is defeated. He is defeated. This is 100% defeat on, on his first major defeat. Yeah. Yeah, so Luffy does not win his fight against Crocodile. He does not. Yeah, so uh, Evan, what'd you think of this one? Um, well, I'm glad that Luffy's alive, although I feel like I couldn't imagine him dying. <laughs> <laughs> What's the rest of the we're, be about? We're, we're following Sanji's quest to cook stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of pieces of the puzzle are coming into play in this chapter. Um, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of sides, all making their moves. Smoker and Tashigi make an appearance. I love Smoker's yeah. bike. I think that's such a cool, such a cool <laughs> thing. Yeah, agreed. But I think it's interesting that Tashigi makes the decision to go after the Straw Hat crew instead of actually trying to help, um, you know the, you know the the country. Mm -hmm. So I guess that kind of tells you where her priorities are here. I guess. But uh, you know, credit to Smoker, he lives up to Tashigi, kind of, yeah, you know, trusting her to make the decision. Apparently, he has something else that's important to go take care of. When did Sanji start wearing glasses? <laughs> I think he's wearing glasses this whole chapter. Uh, I think they're the same ones from when he uh, was at the casino. I guess he, he just liked them. Mr. Prince and just had to take them yeah. off. Yeah. He, he's still in uh, Mr. Prince mode. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, Sanji, Sanji does. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, I think it's my favorite insult of all. Of Sanji's is when he calls Zoro Moss, uh, Mosshead. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's my favorite one. <laughs> that was good. Is <laughs> uh, what you were saying? Oh, I was just saying, I thought it was really funny when Nami uh, punched Zoro and uh, Sanji um, <laughs> for arguing. There's like a heart shape bumped on, on uh, Sanji's head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. And uh, Zoro is uh, lifting eyelashes on on his sword. He's yeah. doing uh, like curls <laughs> with the sword <laughs> eyelash on the end. <laughs> Classic Zoro. Uh, I love the giant sand pit that that is the with the with of course a classic doom sound effect mm. after uh, Luffy is dropped into the pit. Yeah, yeah, and then Crocodile just leaves Luffy behind again, not taking Luffy as like a real threat. Like he's he's not even bothering to, again, in true Bond villain fashion, to actually like finish him off. Like he's as good as dead in his eyes, so he just leaves him here. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I've ever seen someone that I would also like, I am. He's wrong to not finish the job, but to a degree, it's like my God, he is bleeding from an open gut wound <laughs> in the middle of the desert. Like this is, I mean, this is this is about as good as you can get. Like, so yeah. yeah. He also probably only posed a massive threat to Crocodile either, because like Crocodile handled him, handled him pretty easily in yeah. three minutes. He only seems Crocodile to get a single hit. And Luffy's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. he's like, you're still alive, ugh, or something. <laughs> but, yeah. And then overall, um, you know, the whole situation is now escalating. We have like the forces of the Rebel Army like going to meet the forces of the um, like the Royal Guard. So. Like the, those the key players are all coming into place here now, and things are about to get really bad. Mm -hmm. This is a powder keg, and someone just lit the match. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, anything else on this one? Nothing bad. What's the the royal guard guy? Not Pell, Chaka. Uh, Chaka. Yep. Chaka. Man, he's a he's a wide dude. <laughs> in that in that. 
panel he gets. He's a big dude. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen too much of him yet. We've seen Pell in action, but not Chaka. We'll see. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's get Evan's summary for the next chapter. All righty. Chapter 180. And bear with me, because this one has a lot of different plot points. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, chapter 180, Alabasta, Animal Land. Luffy's body is pulled from the sand. He's alive and he's been saved by Miss All Sunday. Uh, did I read that right? <laughs> Miss All Sunday asks, why do those with D in their name fight on? At that moment, Pell arrives. Miss All Sunday suggests that he helps Luffy and tells him the princess is alive and heading to Alabarna. Then she speeds away in her acceler acceligator. <laughs> uh, Luffy grabs Pell and eloquently exclaims meat <laughs> on another note <clears throat> me, me, me. in Nanohara it is revealed that Igram is alive and he must hurry to help Vivi and stop the civil war the rebel forces are five hours away from Alubarna and Yuba the sandstorm has arrived but Toto stands defiant and yells you'll never defeat Yuba meanwhile the straw hats on Crabback reach the Sandora River with no way across, they decide they must swim when they are attacked by a giant catfish. Just in time, the catfish is KO'd by the Kung Fu Juguns. The Straw Hats are helped across the river on the back of the unconscious catfish by the Juguns. <laughs> Two hours later, the Straw Hats reach the opposite bank and decide their and decide their next move when serendipitously, they are met by squadron leader Karu and the supersonic duck squadron. One hour before the clash at Alubarna, the remaining Baroque Works agents spend time arguing over their next move, but they're all in agreement that they must get rid of Princess VB. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, so lots of different animals in this one, so I can see where the title came from. Yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot going on. <laughs> the Kung Fu Jagon Chugon. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of returns as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, like I said, there's a lot to unpack in, in this one, I think. Um, so, first of all, um, I'm glad that Igram is, is back. Igram! Yes. <laughs> My boy! <laughs> yeah, I mean, we surprised to see uh, <laughs> the return I was of surprised, but so happy. So okay. happy. Yeah, this is one I was trying to not reveal. So I was trying mm -hmm. to be very careful to not give anything away. Yep. Because, uh, yeah, so he, he, he made it. He, uh, we don't know how, but he's, he's alive. So, <laughs> yeah, did not say that coming, but very glad to see his return. <laughs> um, but also, beginning of the chapter, Miss All Sunday, like, what? I did not see that coming. Yeah, so what do you make of this? Um, yeah, it was, it, you don't know what to make of it. I mean, I feel like Miss Sunday, obviously, Miss All Sunday, obviously has some ulterior motives. Um, but she mentions, uh, the name D, which has been a recurring theme that's coming back. Mm. Um, and Luffy doesn't even really seem to notice what she's saying. Uh, but he's also like bleeding profusely from the chest. So I feel like he's probably not, doesn't have all of his wits about him. <laughs> Uh, but then she very coolly like gives him the hat again, which is the second time she's done something like this, mm -hmm. which I think is really cool. And like the way they show it in this panel is pretty awesome. Um, it's like a frisbee. Yeah, like a fr she, like, frisbee's <laughs> into herself. But it's cool because I, I feel like she clearly like understands uh, that that's something that's important to him. And so it almost kind of feels like a friendly gesture, which makes me think that she might not have evil intentions for Luffy. And she also did just save his life, which obviously is another clue that she doesn't have bad intentions for him. But like, um, yeah, I thought this was very interesting. And, you know, um, Ms. All Sunday's kind of been like in the shadows and is kind of taking on more of a, more of a present role in the storyline. Yeah. So that's kind of exciting. So I'm very curious to see where that goes. And also, Pell is still alive, so she didn't actually kill Pell. Yes. So Love that's Pell. also good. <laughs> yeah, very glad to see Pell not dead. 
I, I do mean, get the sense that um Joe alive, Egram alive, Luffy alive. Like, nobody dies in this series <laughs> ever. <laughs> the dog all faked out. Uh, yeah, I do get the sense that uh, Miss All Sunday is curious about things, and like she's curious about um, the name D. Yep. So, yeah, I just get the sense that she's trying to find more information, and she doesn't really find Luffy gives like a really like any information that she's looking for. So she's just curious because mm-hmm. like his name is Z. She's like, oh, do you know anything about this? Like, but she's kind of like she still helps him anyway. Like, but she could just left him for dead. So, I think it kind of says a lot about her. Yeah. She's got big plans. Big plans. <laughs> Can we talk about the Celligator for a second? Yeah, go for Let's it. That thing it. is so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> He's got two bananas. That's how he gets his yeah. power. There's like a banana spoiler on the back with some like racing stripes. <laughs> It looks uh, like he has like a little um like cockpit kind of thing too. Yeah, it's very cool. I love the design. I thought that was super fun. She like zooms off in it. That was great. Also, thank God for those uh Kung Fu Ju guns. Because Kung Fu Ju guns. They've been in trouble without them. So it's a good thing that the little moment where they uh had the little training session, you know, that paid off because now they came that back. That paid off big time. Mm-hmm. It's a miracle. Go- He's running on water. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> plays over that in the summary he's picking up speed it's the power of love will this do <laughs> yeah yeah this is where uh, Chopper's um, like animal talking abilities are coming into play because he's yep. able to translate and say what that's gonna like get pincer to keep going. <laughs> or pincers. And I can see why they're friends, eyelashes and the uh, pincers. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of common. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I also love the reveal of the supersonic duck squadron. Yeah. <laughs> what a cool group. Uh, homies i feel like they all have like <laughs> very distinct looks yeah for sure do we get their names at some point we do uh they're do they're in the sbs that's right um yeah I, I do have them um i think yeah i had them listed here um I, I can give them um after the next chapter okay but yeah i have them written down here pretty great uh, anything else on this one? I think we're good. We're good. The, the Duck Squad will carry us home, even if the crab can't. <laughs> yeah, just uh, get, getting rides here and there. <laughs> okay. Chapter 181, Supersonic Duck Quiz. The rebels are now within sight of Albarna, causing the Royal Army to raise their defenses. The Baroque Works officer agents gather at the main gate in anticipation that Vivi and the Stray Hats will arrive there. Mr. Four is the first to notice the crew coming into view. Miss Merry Christmas spots them with the binoculars and sees that they're riding ducks. She is surprised to see six of them, as they should only be four left with Luffy out of the picture, but Miss Doublefinger points out that Mr. Prince and his partner would make up the other two. Mr. One says that they just need to worry about taking out Vivi. But then they realize that they're all wearing matching cloaks, so they don't know which one is her. Mr. Four launches a volley of exploding baseballs at them, which they evade and split up. The officer agents decide to do the same and head to meet them at each gate. Once the agents each catch up to their respective targets, Zoro, Usopp, Chopper, Sanji, Nami, and Eyelashes all reveal that none of them were Vivi. Vivi comes out from behind the rock with Karu and makes her way to the, new, the now clear entrance in hopes of stopping the rebels. All right. Uh, thoughts on this one? Little duck diversion. <laughs> this is smart. This is a smart move, and it <laughs> seems to work pretty well for a while. This is a fun chapter. I think there's some really cool paneling in this chapter. 
I really like the reveal of all six characters. Yeah, that was great. Including yeah. eyelashes. That was pretty great. <laughs> the curveball. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, I, I love, love how of, out of out of all of them, Chopper is the most serious. <laughs> yeah, <right>? <laughs> but like one thing I love that Oda does here is that he has the characters in universe give an explanation as to like what the readers might be thinking as well. So it's like, oh, okay, so that makes sense. We can account for all those characters. So we as readers up to a certain point just go along with it and think BB is part of that group. Right. And then when we get the actual reveal and then see the eyelashes was like the, the wild card. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, because like that that that's not something I would have ever thought of, but I just was riding the one of the ducks. <laughs> so yeah, that that's a great reveal. Yeah. Another reveal is Mr. Four's bazooka baseball bombs. <laughs> yeah, the first Which time we see him in a job. Yeah, like, uh... like, like, baseball, what? Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we always get to know what's written on the back of these people's coats and such. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for the translation notes. One or justice or come my way or mm-hmm. yep. in the case you forgot the last time you saw it. <laughs> yeah, just in case. <laughs> Mr. One continues to be the weirdest looking dude. Like yeah. I mean, there's a lot of weird looking people, but his goddamn body is so weird. He's all fingers. He's all fingers, man. <laughs> yep. The stages are set. Everyone's matched up. They have like multiple face offs ready to go. Pretty much. Face off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now uh, we, we do get the clash where the armies are now like within um basically within like distance of each other now like they're about to uh they actually get into the fight so there's kind of no stopping at this point so like yeah that they arrive here and they're gonna try to stop the fighting but it might be a little too little too late just a bit maybe we can just minimize the damage as much as we can that's the hope at this point I will never get tired of Mr. Uh, Tubon Clay's poses of just with his hands like this. And just... <laughs> but then the battle begins first. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> also, when, when the ducks are approaching, he's like, it's so iffy. It's so <laughs> iffy. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Two has some of the, the best reactions here. Yeah, I don't think I have too much more to add here. Same. Let's get to it. Okay. Um, the only thing is, uh, let me go through the names of the Supersonic Duck Squad. Yes. <laughs> um. So the the names that they they have here, like um, like oh, it actually goes through the line because there's a picture here, but um, I'll, I'll just give the name. So we have Cowboy, Bourbon Junior, Centaur, Hikoichi, Stomp. And Ivan X. So not really like a consistent like naming basis. So they all have like pretty uh, unique names. But, uh, I like Cowboy. I think he's cool. I'm a Centaur fan. I like uh, <laughs> Bourbon Junior. <laughs> yeah, they're they're a good group. Solid group. <laughs> okay, and then um, we get the next part of the new cover story. So moving on from uh, from Django, we get to short term cover series number four, Escapee. A six armed figure leaps off the side of a marine vessel into the ocean. Hmm. Looks kind of like a scorpion. Hmm. <laughs> I guess uh, I scorpions wonder. are uh, arachnids, right? Are they bay legs? <laughs> Wait, scorpions or arachnids? Yes, they are. I yeah. wasn't sure if you were joking. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's possible. It's possible. I don't know why he's dripping the water, though. <laughs> okay, and how about we get uh, Evan's summary for the next chapter? Okie doke. 
Chapter 182, Roar. Vivian Carew stand between Koza and his two million rebels charging towards the south gate. As Koza draws his sword, Vivi yells, demanding the rebels to stop. Koza barely makes out her silhouette when cannonball fire obscures his view. Chaka reprimands his soldier for the rogue cannonball, but turns out the soldier is actually an undercover Baroque's work, works agent. The rebels continue their advance through the smoke screen. Vivi, Vivi continues yelling desperately. In all the confusion, Koza passes right by Vivi. As the cavalry charges blindly through the smoke, Vivi is about to be trampled when Karu uses his body as a shield protecting Vivi. Chaka fires the cannons and the Battle of Alabasta begins. Vivi is still determined to stop the war. She recalls something she learned on the merry-go to never give up. Suddenly, Usopp arrives on a horse and offers to help Vivi. After he disregards Karu, Vivi shows it. Sorry, Vivi knows it's not the real Usopp, and she know she makes a run for it with Karu. Mister Tubon Clay shows his true face and pursues Vivi. All right, thoughts on this one? This is an intense chapter. I kind of glazed over some details there in the summary, but the intensity on Koza's face oh. is in super good and mm. super sad. Yeah, super intense. Um, and the passing of Koza past Vivi, like ships in the night. Ugh, that was pretty heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That, that's know, what I was like thinking. She came well. all this way and came so close, you know. And it was kind of all, all from a fluke that this Baroque Works agent kind of like launched a cannonball and disrupted the whole plan. Ugh. Like, yeah, oops, that's... my bad. Was, was that me? <laughs> Whoops, <Yeah>. a daisy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got the Baroque Works head too, so you know. It's just you so know. so much. Yeah, <laughs> so obvious. Uh, yeah, that was tough because you 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 know you've been rooting for Vivi this whole time to see to see her have her chance and it kind of get uh, foiled in the last possible moment is a bummer. Yeah, and like the intensity, like also like in like that one panel where it's just it says like Koza where like Vivi's like shouting and mm -hmm. it's basically just that. And then like when you like it cuts over to Vivi, like you can see like you can't really tell what she's saying. Like it's just like lines going through, yeah. So she's screaming as well as she can, but it's just like not coming through. So like nobody could hear because like over the noise. And then yeah, Nicola just runs right by her, which is you know like you said, I, like heartbreaking. It really is because like the desperation and like her shouting, mm -hmm. um, it was all all for nothing really. Um, and, and it, yeah, it seems like Koza like almost had a moment of realization there. Like it seemed like he was kind of onto something, and he kind of saw, thought something was up. He like saw her silhouette. I think he mm -hmm. heard his voice. Or he heard his name, um, and maybe was starting to put together. But it was like the heat of battle, and like all of his comrades are like in war mode around him. And I feel like he wasn't able to kind of like concentrate or hone in on that uh, little disturbance. Yeah, he just so, kind of like brushes it aside. And kind of brushes it off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so many missed opportunities. Yeah. I think Karu comes up big again. I feel like Karu's been such an MVP for Karu. sure. Through this whole arc, like Karu <laughs> saves Vivi's life here from getting trampled by camels. Yeah, this is also like heartbreaking too. Like the panel with like Karu like kind of like yeah. beat up and like laying on the ground, and, like his eyes have blanked out. Yeah, I was like, no way Karu is dead. But what, two, yeah. Two chapters ago, we found out, like, no one died, so. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. no way to kill off Karu. No. He's still alive. Like, how much of a beating can one duck take? <laughs> yeah, karu has been through it. Oh, this is also a sweet moment for VV when, um, you know, she's downtrodden because everything has just, like, fallen apart. Um, but she doesn't give up and she's like, I learned something, you know, with the straw hats and like being on that boat that, you know, you never give up. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a great panel. Usopp. Sure. Yeah, and the Usopp shows up. Woo! <laughs> Usopp to save the day. <laughs> <laughs>
But then, like, a few panels later, we see Usopp is, like, completely beat up with eyelashes. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> mention that in the summary. It's like, yeah, we got clobbered in about two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> one second each. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. That's all it took. Oh, one second each. I didn't even see that. Yeah. That's hilarious. It's not, like, you should have held that longer. <laughs> you should have tried a bit longer. <laughs> Yeah, so we know Mr. Two got away um, because Usopp and the eyelashes couldn't hold them off. And Usopp even had the the bandage or the the marker. Oh, um, uh, Mr. Two had the the bandage on on his arm. Yes, yeah, sorry, the, yeah. the not the not Usopp Usopp. Yeah, the fake Usopp. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, yeah, so Usopp presents the, the bandage to show that's him. But then BB realizes it's not him for some reason. So we're like, well, what what is it? Like he has the thing that, that they showed us that they planned ahead of time. So I, I think this is like it's a really smart thing here that we see like BB picks up on something that we don't know as a reader yet. Right. Yeah, I was like, wow, that was like like good on BB. Like that was a good pickup. <laughs> yeah, and he, he has uh, the goggles. goggles too. Guards. Yeah, he's like the birds are gone or like forget about it. Um, and she knows their relationship, so she knows Usopp would never say that about Karu. Yeah, um, that was like the first thing that like kind of gave her like like that sense like oh something's not right here. Forget yep. that bird. <laughs> that bird. He's he's definitely hasn't been the MVP of the saga. <laughs> yeah, after their their fight together on the little garden, you know that Usopp and yeah, Karu have right. that that bond, so. And uh, I just love this panel here uh, with Mister Two, with the the reveal with like the um, like the shadow on his face. Oh yeah, it's like I wonder what gave me away. But like it's like a very sinister look on his face. So sinister. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> and then immediately into a swan dash, which is less <laughs> less sinister, I would say. Yeah, you can't escape me. <laughs> and the car was still going. Like he, he he was down, but he's up again. So he's up again. Yep. Can't keep a good duck down. Nope. <laughs> I believe in Caro's supremacy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think he's the leader for a reason. Yeah, squadron leader, what's next? <laughs> king of Alabasta? Um, <laughs> Pirate King? <laughs> Caro finds the One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> That's the secret. We're going to find out in the <laughs> next modern latest chapter, Joel. It's Caro. Caro. <laughs> okay, you guys ready to move on? Ready. Yep. Okay, next part of the cover story. Hachi's Walk on the Sea Floor. Volume 2, Let's Go Home. Hachi begins to swim back to his home as he passes some sea life creatures. Okay, mm. Hachi. Not a scorpion. Not a scorpion. <laughs> Good guess. Octopus. Or is it octopus? Yeah. Yeah, he's an octopus, yep. So not too much there, but we uh, we now know the next cover story is going to be about the former uh, Awarang crew member. Yeah. Who always seemed a bit nicer than the others. Yeah, he was a likable character. Yeah. <laughs> he was totally willing to give Zoro that, that uh, like like the ride. swim across, right <laughs> yeah. across over the water. Accidentally super helpful. <laughs> okay, let's get on to chapter 183. Squadron leader Karu. After their encounter with Mr. Two, Zoro devised a plan to be able to tell who the real members were by having them reveal a black X symbol underneath their bandages, as only the true members would know about them. Since Mr. Two did not reveal the symbol, Vivi realized he wasn't really Usopp. As she makes her escape on the injured Karu, they think that they are in the clear once he jumps up on the wall at high speed. But fortunately for them, Mr. Two is able to follow suit. At the top of the wall, they are surrounded by the chaos but decide to try to make their way through to the palace in the hopes of being able to find Koza. Karu is hit by a stray bullet and goes down. As Mr. Two closes the gap, he is attacked by Cowboy and Ivan X of the Supersonic Duck Squadron, accompanied by Sanji. He tells the ducks to accompany BB to get away, while he stays behind to fight Mr. Two, where they cross legs. Outside the main gate, after being defeated by Mr. Two, Usopp finds an injured Chopper. Chopper warns Usopp that Miss Merry Christmas and Mr. Four are still nearby. Miss Merry Christmas is a, is a mole woman who is hiding underground 
while Mr. Four is a cleanup hitter that has a dog that works with him. Usopp has no idea what that means. Before he can get up to speed, a baseball comes flying at him and explodes. All right, let's uh let's start with the the reveal of uh how they could tell who the the real ones were. Brilliant, double bluff. Brilliant, <laughs> right? <laughs> I was thinking that. Like, I remember thinking that when they first did that. I'm like, I hope they have like like a password, like a special like word or something to go along with that, because like, uh, it's not perfect. It's not perfectly fail safe, you know. Mm. But Zoro thinking ahead. <laughs> Yeah, it, um, it was yeah, very smart. Very um, smart. Yeah, because like I think it, it was smart that Broke Work picked up that they did that, mm-hmm. and that they were trying to use it. But it was like, like extra, like it was like next level that like Zoro thought that far ahead too. That like, oh, if they pick up on that, we have like the the true thing hidden behind it, which they can't see behind the bandages. So I thought that was like a really brilliant uh, reveal here. Mm-hmm. Wow, and if Karu wasn't making a play for MVP last chapter, I mean this chapter, <laughs> come on. So I love that comical moment. Like Karu runs straight up like a sheer rock face. Um, and it has kind of like that classic cartoon moment where like you're hovering in mid space and kind of like is he able to fl- he's like, able to like flap over to the edge, like maybe, maybe <laughs> he did it. It's like, but you can't fly. It's like, yes, I can. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I can fall with style. <laughs> yeah, then uh, Mr. Two is not letting him get away. I said, wait, I'm going to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> he was determined. <laughs> and he just runs up the cliff. <laughs> Man, what a heartbreak, too, when Kuro, or when um Karu goes down. Yeah. Um... The visually, that whole scene was done really well. I thought, like the shot of Karu going down and like gritting the teeth with the blood mm. coming out. Like, oh my god, he's already got like one eye closed from blood. Yeah, Karu is a tank, like broken foot or whatever. Yeah, pure determination. And then just when you think the swans are going to beat the ducks, the ducks retaliate <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> That the shot, bird wars. <laughs> yeah, the bird war. The shot of uh, the gun, the bird. War. What is it, cowboy <laughs> and Ivan X? Are those the two that are in there? Yeah, <clears throat> that headbutt from Ivan X is top notch form. Yeah, that was beautifully done. Yeah, Ivan X is like like the the big one. Uh, like he's he's got like some beef to him, you know. Kind of got some Viking hit, Viking hit hard, vibe. Yeah, <laughs> Viking helmet vibes. Yeah. So good. And, and the cowboy. cowboy's got the, the double goggles. He's got the goggles on his eyes and his hat. <laughs> <laughs> what is he, a Final Fantasy character? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be belts more. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great scene. And then we get Sanji versus um, Tubon Clay, which I think is a great matchup, and I can't wait to see that. Mm. And he loses the glasses. Yeah. Finally. We we get the panel dedicated to the loss of the glasses, R.I.P. No. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Prince no more. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Prince no more. Yeah, I like that panel where um you know, like uh like Mr. Two it looks like Mr. Two's coming for a kick and Sanji kinda of goes to like intercept with his own kick. Yep. Thwack. So like Zoro, you know, has ha- he's had more like sword fights. We haven't really had Sanji have somebody who has like a similar fighting style to him. So I think That's this is cool. a pretty exciting like matchup here. Yeah, agreed. Battle of the kicks. Oh, and I like how um Mr. Two says, Oh, you must be Mr. Prince. And then Sanji says, No. And then he drops the glasses. He says, I'm Sanji. <laughs> so that, that's how you know Mr. Prince, the, the person who has gone now. Yep. I'm Sanji, <laughs> a top flight sea cook. <laughs> Great, intro. cook. Well, I'm a top flight swan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got the comebacks. <laughs> Touche, Bonclay. Yeah, but cooks shouldn't mess with criminals. I'm a criminal too. I'm a pirate and a cook. 
So we're two peas in the pod, eh? <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a great battle. <laughs> Speaking of great battle, we um, move over to Chopper and Usopp, who are being confronted by Mr. Four and uh, Miss Merry Christmas. I know Sean's looking forward to this one. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's gonna be so fun <laughs> uh do you guys want to move on to the next chapter any other thoughts on this one yep let's get over with <laughs> <laughs> are we you us? we'll see we'll see <laughs> <laughs> okay well uh before that we have the next part of the cover story hachi's walk on the sea floor volume three Hachi rescues a panda shark. Hachi removes a fishing hook from a panda shark. <laughs> sure does. So I couldn't find a reason why um, it was written this way. It was like, it says pan, and then in parentheses is the. Like, I was thinking maybe there's like some kind of pun here, but I, I, I couldn't know. think of anything. I tried to see if there's any kind of like translation thing with it, but yeah, I I couldn't find any reason why it would have been that way. I don't know. I am I am at a loss. Uh, anyway, th- yeah, that's that part of the cover story. <laughs> All right, and then uh, we have Evans' uh, summary for the next chapter. Yep. All right, chapter 184, Moletown, block four. At the southeast gate, Mr. Four and Miss Merry Christmas face off against Usopp and Chopper. Mr. Four reveals his favorite gun, Lasso, who is a gun that ate the mutt-mutt fruit. Yep, that's right. Turns out the latest technology on the Grand Line allows inanimate (laughs) objects to obtain devil fruit abilities. Anyways, he has a cold and just what happens to sneeze exploding (laughs) baseballs. Miss Merry Christmas turns into a mole, or maybe a penguin, to dig a network of connecting tunnels, which she names Mole Town Block 4. (laughs) Mr. Four and Lasso use the tunnels to pitch and hit exploding baseballs at the Straw Hats from every angle. After a few narrow misses, the Straw Hats need to come up with an answer, and fast. That's when Usopp decides to use the tunnels himself and reveal his secret weapon, the five-ton hammer. Usopp waxed Mr. Fult for over the head with the hammer and readies himself for some life-sized whack-a-mole. <laughs> and so it begins. Yeah, how about we uh, start with Sean on this one? <laughs> I do not care for this fight. <laughs> uh, I think, look, One Piece is an incredibly wacky story and it has a lot of wacky stuff, but there's a certain level of like, okay, but let's take this kind of seriously. Maybe at time, maybe that goes over. Like, I don't know. Like, I I know it's super complaining about like, this is too much in a story like this, but this is too much, dude. It's just like, (laughs) I play baseball and I've got a dog that's a gun and it's a baseball and then the thing. And it's like, I just, I can't take this serious. It's just, it's, it's Looney Tunes in the worst way. Like, and I, I don't know. It's fine. It does. It serves the best. As I was telling the Joel, talking to Joel earlier, the best part of this is like uh, emphasizing more like zone type fruits and like uh, mm. Miss Miss Merry Christmas and how that and stuff. But um, a zone type. I thought there was something odd about him. Um, it's it's a cool idea, but I just I don't and I don't care for the dog thing. It's creeps me out honestly (laughs) it's weird uh i do i do like i do like uh usav's five ton hammer uh it's awesome that he's become that strong and (laughs) i'm excited to see more of this technique of his incredibly powerful hammer yeah that escalated quickly yeah it really did that whole sequence though at the end when he flips the hammer and he's like it's Captain Usopp. Usopp. yeah so good the destroyer king good the destroyer king (laughs) I've sunk countless numbers of warships. People call me the Destroyer King. (laughs) Yes, I mean we know it. We've seen it. We've seen him do it. 
<laughs> the chopper is like amazed. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So yes, that is the best parts of the chapter. Usopp and a bit of lore. The rest of it, not for me. But Evan, what about you? Yeah, it's like a weird combo of <laughs> abilities and people. <laughs> like it's literally life-size whack-a-mole. Like massive hammer and a literal mole with multiple holes. Uh, <laughs> and then yeah, Mister Four and Lasso. Is it Lasso? Did I say that right? I think it's Lasso. Lasso. Well, Unless it's Lasso. Lasso. Because I think it's two O's, right? Yep, it's two S's, two O's. I think it's Lasso. Lasso. Achoo. <laughs> Lasso. God bless you. Um, I thought, uh, yeah, I'm kind of with Sean. I thought this was a little too bonkers off the wall. Um, Just like a motley crew of <laughs> heroes and villains, really. But yeah, it is cool, like, um, having multiple Zoan types facing off. Yeah, it feels like we went from, like, being introduced to the concept of the Zoans, now, like, they're all over the place. Yeah. Like, just from, like, Albast alone, we've been introduced to, like, what, five more Zoans or whatever? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Hell, and... Is Lassu te technically a Zoan type? Yeah, because he's a gun. So the actual <laughs> double fruit is... The mutt mutt fruit. <laughs> so, um, th this is a, a really wacky concept. And like when I first went through the series, like this did not make any sense to me. I'm like, how did the gun eat it? Um, <laughs> so, but it, it said technology, so maybe there's yeah. like a way in which I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So I, f I feel like <laughs> early on in the series, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but like as I've been exposed to the series more, I feel like this. I, I don't. I don't even like bat an eye at this anymore. So, <laughs> but going through like it, it is very wacky. Um, but I, I think it's part of the fun. Like I, I can get where Sean's coming from, but like it doesn't, it doesn't bother me in that way. Um, I got, but Mister Four and Miss Merry Christmas are also probably like, my least favorite characters of Broke Works. Um, yeah, like just in general, they feel yeah. very one. They're they're the same joke. It's Mister Four or doesn't talk, and Miss Merry Christmas is really loud and annoying. Like it's like, yeah, like it's one talks too much, again, don't just talk again. enough. <laughs> <laughs> one's yeah. too fast, one's too slow. Um. And then, like, when Chopper explained, like, what was going on, it didn't make any sense. But, like, she was, uh, he was like, explaining, like, um, like you know, he, he's a gun that shoots baseballs that explode. And, like, the other guy is a clamp hitter. The other one's a mole. <laughs> it's like, okay. Sure. <laughs> but, but then it was I was like, what are you even talking about? And then now it's, it's clicking for him. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think this is still a fun setup for, like, um, a fight. And I think it's just being fun. It's fun to be introduced to. Uh, things we haven't seen before in the series. Um, so there's some new concepts being introduced and different forms of uh, Zoans and, you know, this fighting style here. Um, and then um, <laughs> I think it's hilarious here that uh, Usopp thinks that uh, Miss Merry Christmas is a penguin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm a mole. <laughs> <laughs> she even says, enjoy your stay at Mole Town Block 4. And she's turning into a mole woman, and he says, "A penguin? A penguin? <laughs> <laughs> like you didn't even get something similar, like like a, I don't know, like a an armadillo? I don't know, like some a penguin is a sea animal. It's we're in the desert. No claws, like, like those big claws. <laughs> it's just like, come on, like. I also love the moment where um, Chopper is trying to attack Mister Four. And uh, as he's staging his attack, uh, Miss Merry Christmas grabs his leg and holds him still. And he's about to get hit by a baseball. And he um, is, like, about to go down. And then he, he realizes, he's like, oh, yeah, I can, like, shrink down. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> and he dodges it by just turning back That's into his little, his little form. <laughs> his little cute form. Yeah. <laughs> he, he tries to punch... Um... Uh, Miss Merry Christmas, he says, curse you, mole lady. And then she, like, dies away. And then um, he says, and curse you, Durham doll, and tries to punch Mr. Four. He jumps in the hole, too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but he, he transforms into the, the bigger form when he tries to do the second punch. So, like, Chopper's, like, very fluid with his transformations, which I think is fun. Yeah. And then uh, the great moment where Usopp says, uh, you guys are the only one that can use these holes. And he, like, jumps out with the, the giant hammer and yeah, smashes Mr. Great. Four. Which, like, I don't know. Like Usopp and Chopper giving up a really good fight here, right? 
And the fact that they were beaten by Mr. Two in like one second each. Well, that was eyelash as an Usopp. So Usopp is getting a second chance, but oh, Chopper, yeah, was Chopper was here before. Usopp. Yeah, that's right. They didn't have Chopper. That's right. Still, though, you'd think Usopp would have put up a better fight against Mr. Two. <laughs> I don't know. Mr. Two must be uh, pretty what tough. There. <laughs> well, I mean, if he's going against uh, Sanji, I think that gives us an indication maybe like his kind of power level. Yeah. yeah. All right, but how about we move on to the next part of the cover story? Let's. Let's. Hachi's Walk on the Seafloor, Volume 4. Hachi receives a thank you gift of meat. The Grateful Panda Shark brings Shachi to his home to dream with food as thanks for saving him. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Not too much going on here yet. There you go. <laughs> I don't know how refrigerators work underwater, but somehow. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on. Chapter 185. Oh, is that so? <laughs> Chopper is completely amazed by Usopp's ability to wield a five-ton hammer. Usopp wonders if his attack actually affected Mr. Four. Uh, Usopp begins a game of whack-a-mole by trying to hit Miss Merry Christmas, who keeps popping up from the holes in the ground. Usopp tries to intimidate her by revealing that he was the one who single-handedly defeated all of Brokeworks agents and is backed by 8,000 people. Once again, Chopper is completely impressed. As Usopp continues to flaunt how impressively he handles the five-ton hammer, Mr. Four makes a recovery to everyone's surprise. This Merry Christmas begins to get suspicious as Mr. Four doesn't seem to have any injuries, then lastly launches an exploding baseball that causes the hammer to be destroyed. To Chopper's surprise, it was a fake, and just two frying pans <laughs> covered in black plastic. Angry at the deception, Miss Merry Christmas begins attacking Usopp as Lasso and Mr. Four continue attacking Chopper. Chopper decides he needs to end the fight. He uses his scope technique to try to analyze their weakness. Usopp tries to evade the mole, but is not quick enough when she pops out from under the ground, grabs his feet, and drags him into a brick wall. Chopper deduces that their weakness is that all the holes are connected underground, and they can exploit that by causing Lasso to sneeze from the sand, causing a large explosion on the ground. Well, darn, I was hoping Usopp's hammer was a bit more than that, but... <laughs> I must I, admit, I love the, that me the, me the mechanism <laughs> is impressive. Yeah. You know, collapsible, easy to carry. Net weight, 4.4 lib. <laughs> Libs. I always say that. Um, that's a great back. Yeah. Yeah. Thoughts on this one? Paper mache. Paper mache. <laughs> uh. Did you guys catch the uh, return of one of Usopp's classic techniques? Yes. They snuck a rubber <laughs> band in there. <laughs> yeah, because he goes like, um, Usopp pound, Usopp pound, Usopp pound, rubber band, pound. <laughs> <laughs> they even show it, too. You can see him doing the rubber band. Yeah. <laughs> classic. He, 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 he throws that little, uh, that little switch up in there. One of these hey. times, it's going to work. It's going to work. <laughs> one of these times. Yep, more absurdity, but uh, another fun chapter. I like this part of the fight more than the opening because we don't have to worry about the dog so much at this point. <laughs> well, it's more about Usopp's antics. It is a bit yeah. more of an Usopp's antics. <laughs> uh, once again, um, like Usopp is bragging over here and then choppers just like buying every single word so he says like i have eight thousand people working for me like chopper's like really and then like really? when Usopp realizes like like chopper's like giving him attention he's like five times he just like lifts a hammer he's like trying to show off now like he's like just doing things because he knows chopper's like paying attention to him <laughs> <laughs> so funny yeah i think it's so funny and then when they find out it was a fake, he's like, "Of course it was fake. You thought I could really lift five five times?" <laughs> I mean, he's like, like showing off, saying five times, five times. <laughs> I also I love when uh, Miss Merry Christmas is dragging Usopp through the wall, and it makes like a Usopp shaped hole, and you can see his nose. 
his nose made like a clear uh, cut out <laughs> in the brick wall. Yeah. <laughs> little details like that that make it uh, all worth it. So yeah. good. Yeah, his nose once again is like destroyed at the end of this chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Usopp, stay away from that mole. You don't have to tell me <laughs> twice. <laughs> the weakness. I love how serious, like, like the weakness of Mole Town. <laughs> it's, just, it's like a like detective explaining the motive of the killer at the end of the story. Just like, <laughs> now you truly understand the depths of your, your, your failure. <laughs> so you think this is going to be like, kind of like super, like, like, um, like detective work to come up with the solution as to like what would be the the weakness and it's like no oh, that that seems pretty straightforward seems about it <laughs> but i mean i i do i i kind of like this little gimmick of chopper um like this is like the second second time we've seen him use it but um yeah this is the second time we actually see him in like in a, a real fight too so it's like the second time we like we had an opportunity for him to actually use it um but yeah, I, I just don't know like how effective like it really is. But I guess we'll see you next good. chapter. Hmm. You talking about Chopper's abilities? Yeah, he does like the scope, like as a specific thing. Yeah, he the does. scope. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have too much more to add on to this. One. I, I I told you, it's uh, it's it's. I'm glad it's it came to a cool, explosive conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's um one of the fights. I mean I I enjoy these fights, but it's just like there's not really that much to really discuss. And we, I think we've talked about like all the fun moments with the the up hammer stuff. So mm-hmm. next chapter ends strong though, so mm. I'm ready to keep going. Okay, so Evan, how about you uh give us the last uh, chapter of the volume? Yep. All right, chapter one eighty six four. The explosion was not enough to defeat Mr. Four and Miss Merry Christmas. Sorry, Sean. (laughs) Usopp tries to run away, but is caught by Miss Merry Christmas, and she reveals that Luffy is dead and mocks his dream to become the Pirate King. Usopp is enraged. As he is being dragged, he tells Chopper, there are times when a man has to fight, even if there are seemingly no chances of winning, which is when their friend's dreams are being laughed at. Usopp is struck by a massive blow from Mr. Four's bat, but he somehow is able to get back to his feet. Chopper uses the his extra special transformation, Horn Boost. Mitch, uh, Miss Merry Christmas seizes Usopp and attempts the same move to finish him for good this time. But before Mr. Four can strike, Usopp lets loose a smoke star, clouding his vision. In that moment, Usopp slips out of his shoes and from Miss... Merry Christmas grasp and Chopper scoops her up with his antlers just in time for Mr. Four's cleanup swing, which sends Mole Lady flying. <laughs> Using Chopper's antlers to make a massive slingshot, Usopp launches his hammer, which takes out both Mr. Four and Lassie. Usopp and Chopper get the first victory and win the battle of Alubarna's Southeast Gate. And that's the end of the fight. <laughs> all right hey, it was worth it some cool chopper poses here and transformations <laughs> yeah yeah i mean so even we... if this even if this whole fight is a little bit of a flop i think it looks really good it looks good it always looks good like that I think opening, really that opening panel when they're kind of all like rising from the smoke yeah pretty sinister looking it's like, oh, we, we thought we beat them, but I guess not. Yep. It's not over. <laughs> and Usopp takes a seemingly fatal shot to the face with like that. The bat we know is incredibly strong because earlier in this book, he leans it up against the wall and it breaks the wall. It's so heavy. Um, But he swings full mustard and just like takes out Usopp to the, and it even has a panel of like a skull with like the nose breaking. Mm. 
mm-hmm. and like different cracks in the skull. Yeah, it's a Mortal Kombat X-ray move. So yeah, much MK like in X-ray, these X-ray, yeah. like internal damage was done. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like uh... broken. I'm like, <laughs> maybe his nose like softened the blow or something. Maybe he has like, a super <laughs> strong nose. It's it like so big. Way out of this, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was not expecting him to immediately stand up after that one. But then <laughs> the the panel of his face post smash is pretty gnarly i mean it's pretty rough gushing yeah. blood from his entire face it's like pale white eye like like what happened there yeah pretty gnarly and then we immediately see um chopper's counter when he goes uh horn boost which is pretty badass it's a pretty badass shot uh chopper all amped up yeah and that's the um, the last Form that we, we we haven't seen um, all seven yeah. of his um, his transformations yet. Um, so yeah. presumably, presumably he must have eaten the Rumble Ball um, at one point. I'm thinking maybe in this like top panel of the page, it says I won't let you do it, and he goes like flop. I'm thinking maybe he took out the Rumble Ball because um, he says I'll show you an extra special transformation. So the only way he could access this transformation is if he had the Rumble Ball, but he doesn't make a big show about it like he did last time. Because uh, we don't really have. Um, I don't remember him actually taking it at any point. Um, does I don't he? Know if you guys does, saw it. Does he need the rumble ball to use like scope and his other abilities? No. So the scope is just like a technique that he does when he's in um his brain point mode. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But um, to access the horn boost, this is like one of the hybrid modes. So um, in order to do this one, he does have to have the rumble ball. So right before he uses scope on page, I don't know what page, but there's a panel right before he uses scope and he says rumble and then oh, there's a little okay. chomp and like an action. Oh, I see it. Okay. oh yeah. That's right why. before okay. he uses scope. So that's what I was thinking. Like maybe he needs rumble to use like scope and brain boost, which he uses back to back right there. Okay, so yeah, I I missed that going through it. So yeah, so he, he does eat the rumble ball then. So he, it was just yeah, like explicit earlier. Okay, uh, yeah, I don't think he needs to to do that to do the scope necessarily because that's just something he does in, in his um, brain point mode, mm-hmm. which is like when he's like the little mode. Right. But, yeah. Um. But yeah, he does have the rumble ball. It's just um. I don't think he does any of the other forms until this point. Until that one, yeah. And how long does he have that for? Is it three minutes or five minutes? Yeah, three or... minutes. Three so minutes. where's that crocodile's little sand timer when you need it? Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. He's gonna buy one of those for crocodile. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. I think Oda just likes fights to be three minutes long. <laughs> yeah, so it's a good amount of time. This fight, three minutes. <laughs> this was this was a good finishing move, though. I think it was a good like teammate uh, combo move for Usopp and Chopper to take down um, everyone. It was yeah. satisfying. Then. Yeah. And I, I love this like character building moment for um, Usopp and Chopper. How, when they find out that like Luffy was, they, they told, they were told that he's killed. And they say that that's like, that's not true. Like he's gonna be the king of the pirates. And they like have this like absolute conviction in their friend. And they, they believe in Luffy hundred percent. Mm-hmm. So even though like they're like you know like they're being laughed at as like him king of the pirates like you know that kind of thing they they don't waver and they uh, stand up and that kind of gives Usopp like the like the, the courage he needs as well to keep standing up to fight. Yeah, yeah. Usopp's showing some real resistance in that battle because he took some shots. Yeah, <laughs> both bat and baseball bombs. <laughs> And getting dragged through walls. Yeah. Took a beating. I, I do like we get like um like this combination of Usopp and Chopper. You know, because Chopper's so new to the crew. And I think it's always fun to see like these different interactions with different members mm-hmm. of the crew like individually. Um, so like it's nice that we're getting this like kind of opportunity to put them in this situation. Because like there's a lot of different combinations we can have with the crew members. So I think it's just fun like seeing them in action. 
Absolutely. It's a Definitely. flavor or fight depending on which two or three or whatever are mixed up together. Exactly. And it's only get better a strong fighter, fighter too. Yeah. Yeah, and sure the teamwork is. with the um <laughs> the hammer shooting star. Yeah, yeah that was sweet. the hammer with uh using <laughs> choppers uh horns or antlers as the uh I, I, yeah, the antlers as the uh the slingshot. <laughs> that was pretty great. <laughs> and the, at the very end, uh, someone call a doctor. You're a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're the uh, best chance we've got, buddy. <laughs> that's funny. We're not back in uh, Doctor Town, whatever. The, with, <laughs> what's the Waffles yeah. place? Yeah. <laughs> Pointy doctors or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool where we uh, uh, end the volume. After the end of the volume, there's a really cool page, um, the battle map, which kind of like sets up the stage for the next uh, volume, which I thought was kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it says like Mr. Two Bon Clay versus Sanji, Mr. Four, Miss Mary Cribs versus Usopp and Chopper, which just concluded, and Mr. One and Mrs. Doublefinger versus Nami and Zoro. Hmm. Give me some fun matchups. Set in the stage. Set in the stage, and it shows it on the map where all these are going down, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Oda does enjoy his maps. Yep. Yeah, Brokeworks has had lots of maps. <laughs> all right. Um. Yeah. So, final thoughts on the volume as a whole. <sighs> it's getting pretty epic. We have a war going on. Like the scale is very big. The um. The stakes are high. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think Croc and Crocodile is such an amazing villain. Like, I'm very curious to see what it's going to take and how this crew is going to take down Crocodile. Yeah, how about you, Sean? Uh, it was all worth it for that opening Crocodile fight versus Luffy that whatever my slight misgivings about the wackiness of the later stuff, it's all worth it for that initial encounter or the silhouette, the, the just the first time Luffy's ever been soundly defeated in such a way is just a fantastic story point that any, any slight hesitation I have about. So Ooh, it's a dog gun, whatever <laughs> doesn't matter. They could have had two more chapters of the, of these two fighting and I'd still be happy <laughs> because of the initial fights. So. It's actually a gun dog. That's what actually. <laughs> I, I am gonna I am gonna strangle you from across the United States, Evan. <laughs> um yeah, I, I think that there's a lot of really strong stuff. Um you know, like you guys talked about already, like um Luffy versus Crocodile, like the main character was like very easily defeated. Like it was like not even a contest. Um it was just very very brutal to see Luffy like get defeated that badly and just be like so ineffectual against um cracked out with all of his attacks um missile sunday i think is really intriguing um mm -hmm. not entirely sure uh i, I mean I, I know exactly where it's going but <laughs> 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 but you know uh I, I think it's fun at this point like to not really be sure like what her deal is so i think she, yeah. that's a fun little mystery um you know the supersonic duck squadron is like a super fun concept uh i think they're they're really cool um the reveal with the uh the x mark being the fake out, I thought was brilliant. Mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, and I, I still enjoyed like this fight at the end. Again, like, um, not not my favorite characters from Brook Works, but I think there's some really great moments. Usopp is just like um to me like a like a highlight of that whole fight. Um, and of course Egram still being alive. Um, we didn't really get my boy like, really too much, but you know it's, it's just good to know that he he's around. He's back in Alabasta, so we'll see yeah. how that plays out. Hoping Carew pulls through as well. Yeah. MVP. MVP. <laughs> the unsung hero. <laughs> All right. Well, that will conclude this week's episode of the We Are Reading One Piece podcast. You can find this episode wherever podcasts are found at We Are Reading One Piece podcast.buzzprout.com or on our YouTube channel at We Are Reading One Piece. This is a spoiler-free channel up to where we have recorded the podcast, so if you're new to the series, you can visit the channel there. You can also find me and this podcast on my YouTube channel at Pirate King Codex for various One Piece content. Next week, we'll be discussing Volume 21, Utopia. 
I've been Joel, and I've been joined by Sean. This is Sean. And Evan. Thanks for listening. All right. Well, thanks for uh, for coming along. Be sure to bring along all of your hopes and dreams, and we'll see you on the next episode.